Okay guys, I know you thought we were done. I know we've taken a deep dive into Subaru coolant flow. I know I've looked through every little facet of how coolant flows through the heads of this engine. I know we've looked at flow nets. We've looked at transparencies. They're folded up on this engine. We've looked at all kinds of crazy stuff today. But there's one more thing we gotta talk about, and that is the exhaust port configuration for the right head versus the left head on these Subaru engines. This is my little Subaru only shop. It's a DIY Subaru channel. It's a channel where all I do is Subaru builds and race Subaru vehicles in motorsport events. It's a DIY themed channel where I walk you guys through the steps to get your Subarus back on the road and hopefully do a little racing of your own. So thanks for checking out the video guys. I really appreciate it. When you look closely at the design of the exhaust flow paths, what you're gonna see is for the back two cylinders, which is cylinders number three and number four, those two cylinders actually have different exhaust port configurations. Cylinder number three, which is oftentimes right by a turbo, actually has a straight through path for the exhaust ports to exit the combustion chamber and then get into that header. Whereas cylinder number four, on the other hand, has a totally different configuration for the exhaust port path. The exhaust port on cylinder number four, which is the other rear cylinder on these flat four Subaru motors, that port path actually slams right into the cylinder wall, has to make a right turn and then another right turn to exit the cylinder head. And I think that all that heat energy and all that kinetic energy is slamming right into the cylinder wall and having to make a turn and then another turn to get out of the exhaust port and then into the exhaust manifold actually adds a lot of heat to that portion of the cylinder head. I'm gonna rotate this engine so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. In this right head, this is actually cylinder number one and number three. A lot of times there's actually a turbocharger sitting right there, so there's tons of heat building, and yet cylinder number three doesn't seem to have the problems that cylinder number four has. And I think a big part of that is the coolant flow through the heads, but it's also the exhaust port configuration. And with the engine rotated like this, we can take a closer look at how the exhaust ports are configured. And what you're looking at is actually the exhaust ports for both sides of the right-hand cylinder head. And that is the exhaust ports for cylinder number one and cylinder number three, which means there's gonna be two exhaust valves inside each one of these ports. And as you can see, both these exhaust valves for the number three exhaust port actually have a straight through shot right out of the exhaust port into the header and down through your exhaust system. Cylinder number one is the one that actually has that right angle that the exhaust ports have to go through. And if I zoom out, you can think about where the spark plug is located. The spark plug is located in the exact center of the combustion chamber. So that means the center of this point and the center of this point is actually where the combustion chamber is. So over here, the center of the combustion chamber for cylinder three is actually right here. And if you look straight down, it actually goes right down to this exhaust port. Over here on number one, if you go straight down, is actually over here. Cylinder number one would want to exhaust right here if it was lined up with the port. But it has to make a right turn over here and then another right turn to exit out your exhaust manifold. And that means that the exhaust gases from cylinder number one are adding a lot more heat to the cylinder head because those exhaust gases are slamming up against the inside walls and having to redirect direction and then slam up against that wall and then redirect direction again. So all those exhaust gases that are full of heat and they're full of kinetic energy are transferring that heat and kinetic energy into that aluminum head. Now it's cylinder number one and three. We go down here to cylinder number two and four. It's actually a totally different story. This is cylinder number four and this is cylinder number two, which is in the front of the engine. If you look at cylinder number two, cylinder number two actually is a port that has a straight through shot. Those are the exhaust valves for cylinder number two. If you move over to cylinder number four, cylinder number four, all you see is black right here. And that's because all the exhaust gases have been slamming into this sucker and putting a bunch of that carbon against the walls. So if I look at an angle, I can actually see one of the exhaust valves. Those are the exhaust valves. So just like we saw on the other head, the center line on the left head for cylinder number four is actually somewhere over here. And those combustion chamber gases exit the combustion chamber through those exhaust valves and then slam into this portion of the head and have to make a right turn, slam into this portion of the head, and then come out of the exhaust port into your exhaust manifold. So guys, I think that's another reason that cylinder number four has all these problems. Not only does cylinder four have this fundamental flaw in the design of the coolant system, the exhaust gases slam into the walls of the cylinder head and actually transfer a lot of heat and that kinetic energy into the walls of the cylinder head right down this portion where the cylinder head is not actually getting a lot of flow. Those two factors in combination, guys, is why I think these Subaru engines have so many problems in cylinder number four. So this begs the question, guys, why in the world did they actually cast the heads this way? And I gotta be honest, 
I've looked these heads over from the inside. I've looked at the valve train components and all the ports and passages for the valve train components. I've looked at the coolant port and passages. I've looked at the oiling ports and passages. And to be honest, I don't think there's any reason why these Subaru heads couldn't have been cast with these exhaust ports in a symmetrical fashion. And what I mean by that is both of these Subaru heads have one of the cylinders where that exhaust port has to make a quick right turn and another right turn so that both of these exhaust ports can be close. And I suspect that part of that is in manufacturing and cost savings. I think that Subaru probably found it a lot cheaper to manufacture exhaust manifolds with both the exhausts right next to each other. And that makes sense when you're mass producing cars, you have to make certain sacrifices. But I gotta tell you guys, I don't think there's any reason why a company that manufactured heads couldn't actually design a Subaru head where these exhaust ports were completely symmetrical with the combustion chambers. That way you'd have one exhaust port right here and you'd have the other exhaust port right here. And you'd have it on the other head as well. And that way these Subaru heads would actually flow a lot more evenly and all the heat that gets distributed into these heads by those exhaust gases would actually be distributed into the heads a lot more evenly and a lot less of the heat would get into the heads. So if I owned a company guys, or if I was on the R&D team for an aftermarket parts company, I would love to have the project where we redesign these Subaru heads and we actually design a set where you have the exhaust ports completely symmetrical. That would be legit and now I'd totally change the game for these Subaru engines. So thanks so much for watching the video guys. Thanks so much for supporting the Subaru only channel. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it in the comments section. I'm definitely gonna be getting back to you guys. But for now I wanna say thanks so much guys. This is the Subaru only channel. Until next time guys, later. Thanks again for watching this video guys. As you guys know, I'm a diehard Subaru enthusiast. And I've also had the opportunity to be involved in motorsports for over two decades now. But I'm also a professional hydrogeologist. And I've actually spent years in laboratories performing experiments where I studied the flow of fluids using the properties of physics and fluid mechanics. In these YouTube videos, I'm actually able to combine my experience from the laboratories and all the research I've done with my experience from all the motorsport series I've been involved in and my passion for Subarus. If you have any professional inquiries about Subaru related R&D or digital marketing and media, you can contact me at SubaruOnlyShop at gmail.com. Or if you work in private industry or for a public municipality and you'd like to contact me for professional environmental or engineering and design services, you can review my professional academic background, my professional research experience, and my professional consulting experience on LinkedIn. Just go ahead and sign into LinkedIn and look for Luke Shannon and then type TRC. That's the company I currently work for. And if you type Luke Shannon and TRC, I'm the only person that's gonna come up. Thanks for checking out the video guys. I really appreciate it. I hope to hear from you soon.